Hello booktube, it's Louise the BK Bookworm, lovely to see you, hope you're well, hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you are and whatever it is you're doing, suddenly remembered that I need to be slightly louder, especially because I'm in this room. Hello, welcome to my lounge, this is our lounge, I don't think I've filmed in here since we've moved, which is well over a year ago, I don't think I filmed in here. So here you are. This is this is like a little corner of our lounge. I'm having to record in here. Well, I wouldn't normally film in here. I normally film in the room there, that way, um, which is our dining room, because I've got a chair and a table and it's easy set up and it's the back of the house. Um, this is the front of the house. I'm looking out at the other houses. I can't actually see any laundry. This actually is giving me the vibes of Friday Reads because I can see the back of people's houses, but I can't actually see whether they've got laundry out. It wouldn't surprise me if they have because it is supposedly one of the last few days that is going to be dry for the next week or so. So it wouldn't surprise me if they have. That ha family there, they are fabulously organised. Um, do you remember the people that I used to watch and they used to they used to sometimes do two of them together would hang out sheets and stuff like that they're not quite at that level but they are organized they get the washing out early they get it out um, and they take it in and it's all prepared they keep their pegs on their line at all times really is like Friday reads isn't it I've gone straight back into laundry watch that house there they're a bit of a nightmare house actually obviously not the people or the house or anything like that but their washing situation they put stuff out and they don't take it back in and I find myself after a couple of days getting quite worried and I know there are people there because you can see them in the garden sometimes they sit and have a take a bit of the take a bit of the air with a cup of tea and a nicotine pipe <laughs> cigarette uh, in the morning so I know that there are they are there so it's not like I'm worried because there's nobody there and I've you know they're ill but they do leave things out and sometimes you can see a particular item and it's been out there for a couple of days and I think well you know you've not got it, it needs to go out hung out and it needs to be put back in but yeah that's it that's that so actually this is actually giving me very much Friday read vibes maybe this is my new spot for these kind of just general quick not too long, hopefully, videos where I'm just going to uh, tell you what I've been reading recently and uh, catch up with you. How are you doing? It has been a month. August has been a bit of a month. I've seen you last time I was showing you books that I'd read on holiday. Um, it has been a bit go, go, go since then. We've got another fortnight of go, 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 I think. I think we've got some. we've got something coming up that we're getting organised for and lots of stuff is being done for that um and once that's done and dusted perhaps we can get back to a more relaxed but it, it has felt and work's been like that I work if you don't know I um work as a pharmacy technician for the NHS and an NHS hospital and we've had it's just it's just a thing at the moment I, I was talking to somebody else who works for a different hospital I was talking to somebody who knew somebody that was working for a different hospital we are, they are part of the NHS as well we were having a bit of a ching where and he said that another big acute hosp hospital that's in this area is just just having a mare just and it is it's just the way things are at the moment I think it is in a lot of different sectors um there's staff shortages because of illness because of the last two years what everybody's gone through and are still going through because if you work for the nhs there is a particular way if you get the virus you have to quarantine still um we just staffing issues are, are constant and the amount of work that has descended I work in the supply chain and there's supply chain issues like you wouldn't believe and it's just putting so much stress on everybody really is 
So, um, and then with other stuff as well, it's just, it has been a bit of a thing, has been a bit of a thing. So what have I done? What have I done to kind of combat this? Well, I've turned to Patricia Wentworth. That's what I did. Who, who knew that she was going to be my lady for this year? So this year I counted up, I have read 15 Agatha Christie's. You can see my Agatha Christie's there. That's where I keep my Agatha Christie's. Oops, this is a lamp. <laughs> Um, so if I just move that out, oh, it's my lovely dad. Uh, so all my Agatha Christie's are kept here, and I have read 15 of them this year, which is not bad considering we're in September. I've just finished Destination Unknown by Agatha Christie, which I don't have a physical copy of. Um, I need to try and find the Fontana, the pan edition of um, Destination Unknown. I don't think they do it in this particular range. I'll just move this. Here we are, take that one down. So that's the, the kind of books that I really like. This is the um, Fontana Pan range, which came out in the 1970s and 80s. And I don't know whether they do an edition of Destination Unknown. I haven't found one yet, and I am looking for one. Um, but I've just listened to that. And I think it's the first time, I think it was a brand new Agatha Christie for me, which was quite something. Uh, it's part of Read Christie 2022. They're doing this. The theme for this year is travel. So it's looking at the travel that Agatha Christie does, that she did, and the books that feature travel, and then the books that are set abroad or that she wrote abroad. And there's a book for each month that you are supposed to read uh, if you want to. If you want to. I've missed one month. Um, because I had read it last year and it was still too fresh in my mind and I think I gave that a miss. So the um, so I think I've read all the others. So I think I've read eight out of the nine, no, uh, seven out of the eight so far this year and I've read eight other Rag Agatha Christie's. Um, this, so Destination Unknown, it's a spy thriller and mystery very good having it was wonderful having a brand new Agatha Christie that set my heart alight I thought I had read all of them um I know death comes to the end death comes at the end death comes to the end don't know if I got a copy of that there as well can't see it um that's not my favorite and I think that actually we're due to read that later later and that was a long time since I've read that passenger to Frankfurt I haven't read for a long long time um these are not these are more the sp spy, uh, spy thrillers which is I do love a th spy thriller we all know my love of Ian Fleming and James Bond so it's funny that I've not read the um, Agatha Christie kind of more thriller types. Um, I think I've always just gone for the Hercule Poirot's and the, the murder mysteries rather than the kind of the other mysteries. This was really good. There were times that I felt it lagged. Destination Unknown is set in, it starts in London, but it, it goes to Casablanca and goes to Morocco and uh, goes to Fez and, and travels that way. I found it was a bit laboured at times, if I'm honest. I think there was there was a bit, it, it, it sagged a bit towards the middle. It couldn't keep the sense of momentum going all the time. And I understand why with the, with the plot. However, I did really enjoy it and I uh, finished that yesterday. So I have the... I think I've downloaded, or I was going to download the next one, which is They Came to Baghdad. Or I'm going to see, maybe see if I can buy it um, and read it. That's this month's. But it's another spy thriller. And so I'm going to give that a little bit of a rest because having just done one, I thought, well, I'll just give it a bit of a rest and, and see how we go. So I have been reading, I have been listening to and reading Patricia Wentworth, who is... There we go. There's a whole stack of them. Um, she is another writer from the golden age of crime, so the 1930s, 40s and 50s. She is... Uh, it's romantic murder mysteries. Now, romantic and as in there is a romance that takes 
place. They are clean romances, so there is no hanky-panky. I think there may be as much of a kiss, is a, a kiss occasionally happens in some of them, or an embrace, but there is nothing that it's kind of alluded to, or it, it said, you know, they, they kiss, and that's it. Uh, there's, there's no um, taking off of any clothage. So if you're looking for that kind of romance... I, sorry, this isn't the place for that. Well, those particular books aren't the place for that. Um, so, but there is always a romance in them. I've been listening to the narration by Diane Diana Bishop, which, if you read it to Discovery of, of Witches, is like, wow, Diana Bishop. I never knew you did that. No, it is, you know, because that's a character and this is a real life lady. Um, the first one I listened to, it took me a while to get used to her narration. It's not the most vibrant um however i think they re it really works for the stories the stories aren't the fastest oh plane going overhead stories aren't the fastest they aren't the quickest they are quite um sorry could you hear that there's obviously a plane going over the head overhead quite close because it's very loud um Yes. How do I... They're not... Oh, I really can't... I'm trying to think what's the best way of, of describing them that make would make you think... That would mean that you would know what you're getting. They are... Similar pacing to Agatha Christie, but I think a lot more happens in Agatha Christie's books. There is normally quite a small cast of characters... Um, they're, yes, it's quite, and the place features quite heavily in the, well, I suppose that's quite true of Agatha Christie's as well. So they're quite small in terms of characters and quite small in terms of location. So there's not glamorous locations. Um, they are set either post World War One, in between the wars, post World War Two. So that the you have the backdrop of other things going on, but they are very much of small mysteries. Not always murder mysteries. There may have been a murder, but that may not be the focus. Um, the lady detective or the private inquiry agent that it is drawn in is Miss Maud S Silver. And she is an upright Edwardian-esque um, lady detective who knits, a la J. Marple, and um, has kind of has this kind of little cough, and she dresses very old fashioned. She she dresses in a very old fashioned way. She adores Lord Tennyson and quotes him. So she, there is this kind of restraint, and there is a kind of a restraint throughout. There is, there's some quite sassy heroines, even for the time, which I quite liked. I'm not saying they can't be annoying. And I did get a comment from somebody saying, I really liked Grey Mask, which I talked about, which I believe is the first Patricia Cornwall. Uh, Patricia Cornwall? Patricia Wentworth, Patricia Cornwall. God. Um, that Margaret is actually quite irritating in this. Um, and I can see what they're saying. I quite liked Margaret, but that was absolutely fine. Charles uh, Moray is the the chap involved in it. And, that, and it's quite lovely because they are mentioned in other books as people that suggest Miss Maud Silver to look up, to help them in their trouble. Um yeah, I like the ones that have a lot of Miss Maud Silver in, and some of them do. Some of them, she's a real main character. You know how in some of the Marples I complain because Miss Marple isn't in enough of it. You get some good, you know, Maud Silver's right, right involved in it. For example, I read Lonesome Road. Look at that. <gasps> she says reading that piece of paper. Lonesome Road. Um... Miss Maud Silver was was slap bang in the middle of this one. And this one was a really good mystery for this. So she's quite a, a rich, this lady, it's quite a rich heiress, or well, a very rich lady, who has kind of her family kind of, I suppose, hangers on. And there is a very clo kind of closed, um, 
and like in all of them there is quite a closed cast of characters that it could possibly be and she is a lady of 35 who has kind of set up her life to do to work hard to kind of follow what her husband her father did and has expanded it has this beautiful house where she allows the family to come and stay she looks after them and that's where her life is going to go she kind of has given up the idea of, of having a family for herself and so she's you know to kind of I suppose in that at that time she was seen as on the shelf. She was seen as a spinster and she wasn't going to do it. So she's in her late thirties and yet she finds love and it's passionate in a in a kind of a, in a fabulous way. So I really enjoyed that one. That Lonesome Road was really was a really good one. The Benefit Treasure, which I kept reading as uh, benevolent, but it's not. It's Benefit Benefit Treasure. This was a great one. Um, I was actually decorating a room when I was listening to this and it, oh, I got so involved. I hope you can hear me okay. I got absolutely involved in this one. Um, the only thing I would say is this and another one, the water splash, have a, a kind of a character that was similar and that was the only thing was I read the water splash and then I read benevolent treasure one after another and that's a shame that I did that because they had a character in it that was similar and so that tipped me off as to what was going to possibly happen however I would say this book has one of the nastiest characters in somebody that you just loathed and the water splash had exactly the same way so Patricia Wentworth can write characters that are really repulsive and really you're just you wonder how everybody can cope with it so that was that's pretty good it was pretty good so the char the characters kind of lived and I, I kind of I felt for them so I have read all of these so I've read Benevolent Treasure, Lonesome Road, Grey Mask I think I'd shown you previously this was the book that got me into Patricia Wentworth again and I've read The Key, Spotlight I've read, um, The Water Splash, I've just finished The Chinese Shawl and that was very good that was very good Took me a while to get into that one. Um, I found the the character, the first character. She's kind of an ingenue of of kind of twenty one, and there was a bit of insta love, which actually is unusual in these books. They're normally it takes a while for the love to to happen, and the relationships are kind of built up over time. But there there was a bit of insta love in that one, which annoyed me. What was that? Benevolent Treasure. No, I can't remember what the other one. So the Water Splash I really enjoyed. Uh, the Chinese Shawl I really got into at the end. That was a very good one. They are similar. They're all much of a muchness with um, Miss Maud Silver. But I think that's what I'm liking at the moment. They're, they are comfort reads. Oh, I can see the plane. And if the husband was in here, he could tell me what kind of plane it is. It's, it's a an old plane anyway um so the one i'm listening to this morning I, i've initially just started it is the case of william smith i will probably do a little bit of reading of this as well as listening to it i'm finding listening to it is easier at the moment i listen to it on the way to work and on the way back home to work if i go for um any walks or anything like that and i do just have them on when i'm bumbling around um getting stuff done which i'm doing a lot of at the moment so that's the case of William Smith. Yeah, so I got that. Just started that this morning. What else have I got? Um, oh my gosh, two new books that I've got. Wintering by Catherine May. The husband bought me that. So I had read on holiday. What had I read? What was it called? The Electricity of Every Living Thing, which is Catherine May's first book. This is, um, I don't know when this came, this, oh, it's long listed for the Wayne, Wayne Wright Prize in 2020, so it obviously came out around that time. Um, the Power of Rest and Retreat in Difficult Times. Wintering is a poignant and comforting meditation on the fallow periods of life, times where we must retreat to care for and repair ourselves. 
Catherine May thoughtfully shows us how to come through these times with the wisdom of knowing that, like the seasons, our winters and summers are the ebb and flow of life. So I got this just as we were going into our second heat wave. <laughs> and I read in one day 142 pages, which was daft. Um, and it was, and then I thought, you know what I need to do is I need to put this away for a little bit until it is a bit cooler, because I was not getting the truth. I was kind of galloping through it. I do find her very easy to read. At times a little irritating, but very easy to read. I find it, it quite fascinating. I was reading some of the um, reviews of it and reading some to try and get an idea before I actually started reading it what it was going to be about. And they were making quite a big thing about the fact that things were difficult for her. Her husband couldn't work for a while. Her child basically did school refusal. But it's it actually reading it, that sounds more dramatic than actually what it was. So that, there is that. However, it's interesting and fascinating and, yeah, wintering. So I'm, I'm halfway through that and I will pick that up again. And the other book that I, I actually bought, The Complete Guide to the Menopause. That tells you about some of the things that I've been going through. I'm actually not having a hot flush at the moment. So, yeah, so I'm just trying to take control of what's going on in my, my life physically because I'm a woman of that age and whilst I'm trying to do it in a non-medicated way for the time being we will see we will see how it goes I actually don't think I can take the medication that is out there I don't think my body will will actually cope with it um so I think I need to find other ways of doing it but I'm I'm doing the kind of holistic route and um but I'm not you know not averse to seating out further help should it be required I think everything's just very kind of full-on at the moment and so I need to um, when it gets a tiny bit quieter in in a couple of weeks I'm going to ramp up my um, my focus on all things holistic and that kind of stuff so yeah there we go there we go booktube if this has been a bit of a rambly chatty what have you sat here I did a little bit of, of chatting about laundry um I hope you're well I hope you're having a good time and the weather has gone a bit cooler or a bit warmer wherever you are um apparently it's lovely outside today I haven't yet ventured out apart from to put things in the bin maybe a bit later so yeah this has been lovely booktube let's do this again Bye.